Today is the International Day of Democracy. And how timely it is, coming right after Kenya has been through the general election. And so far, so good. It may not be perfect, but it is work in progress. We seem to be ticking the right boxes in many ways. But let's get some perspective first. The August general election is our sixth multi-party election since 1992. We now have the third president since the advent of pluralism, and we have just witnessed the third peaceful transition from one administration to another. We have the right structures. A vibrant parliament that may still be trying to find its place in the presidential system brought on by the Constitution of Kenya 2010. A parliament, though, that has been accused of being subservient to the whims of the executive, but one that has also had some successes too. Now, another structure that stands out is the judiciary. The Supreme Court has reigned supreme, particularly in interpreting the Constitution and being the final arbiter of presidential election disputes. Now, coming after 2007, when the post-election violence was attributed in part to the fact that there was no belief in the courts to adjudicate over disputes arising from the presidential poll. Then came 2013, and the Supreme Court delivered its verdict. Whilst the petitioners disagreed with its findings, the decision enabled the country to move forward. Then came 2017, and the Supreme Court made history, making Kenya the first in Africa to annul a presidential election outcome and only the fourth in the world. Once again, the same court took center stage in 2022, catching the eye even of the New York Times that said, and I quote, in Kenyan elections, the people decide first, then come the judges, end quote. Now, this apex court has also given direction on several constitutional matters, including the gender rule, the division of revenue row, and famously on how to amend, or shall I say, how not to amend the constitution when it threw out the BBI case. All this points to a well-matured democracy in which we can make our own decisions and resolve our own disputes. One point to note, though, is this, the low voter turnout that was witnessed during the just concluded election. At about 65 percent, it is the lowest on record since the advent of multi-party politics. What does it say about us that a whopping 8 million people, for one reason or another, did not go out to vote? To put this into perspective, the 8 million who did not vote were far more than what each of the top two candidates garnered in the election. Let me make it clear. The 8 million who did not vote are more than the 7 million odd votes that President Ruto garnered. That is some food for thought and, in my view, worrying. We can beat the brows of those who didn't vote. We can throw all the cliché sayings out at them about those who don't vote having no right to complain or blaming them for poor leadership because they chose to sit this one out. But perhaps a different approach would be needed to find out just what they're thinking. Remember, theirs is also a silent form of protest. And this too must be interrogated and we must seek to understand what is going on with these 8 million Kenyans. You know, we typically ask the president to reach out to the other six million who voted for his opponent, but shouldn't we also ask him to reach out to the eight million who did not vote? You know, our democracy is nascent compared to others around the world, but it is growing. Do we have challenges? Certainly. For one, we still struggle with the processes, such as elections and ways of making them more credible. Mistrust continues to dominate each step we take, whether it's manual or electronic. There is always that lingering doubt about the outcome of all elections since 2007. And then there is the space of ideals. None of our parties are founded in any particular coherent ideology. 
We flowed through elections using makeshift parties and coalitions that mean little beyond the tallying of votes. But even then, we still must celebrate the basics, such as the relatively peaceful transitions between living presidents across the six elections. You know, in some parts of the world, that alone is a miracle. Even we here must celebrate. And that is my take on this International Day of Democracy.